Hello guys, so um, I've made the first video on um, hypothesis testing. So we talked about um, the t distribution test, one sample. So I've, I've, uh, I've discussed about um, the applications of hypothesis testing, the definition. I talked about um, some terms and terminologies like um, the null hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis. I talked about errors in the um, hypothesis testing we have the type 1 error and the type 2 error and I talked about um, the one sample test and the two sample test in what situations um, do we have problems under each uh, test then uh, we looked at um, we also talked about distributions we have uh, two major distributions on the hypothesis testing you have the two distribution and the set distribution so Okay, so this on in this, in this video, I'm going to be looking at um, an, another example. Okay, so let me walk you through um, this example too. All right, so the problem says the average hour thirty student used in studying at the school is two hundred and eighty six hours. So from this, you can see that this is this thirty student is actually a sample. Okay, so the sample size is actually 30 from this first um, statement. Then the sample mean of, of, of this problem is two, um, 286 hours. All right, this the standard deviation is 55 hours. All right, test the statement at 5% uh, level of significance that the mean hours used to study by the entire college population is 275 hours all right so this last statement here you can see we have the alpha which is level of significance which is five percent and the population mean because we said the mean hours used by the entire college population can you see is 275 remember in the first video if you've not watched it i think you should do so that you can understand some concepts that i explained in the first video i talked about um the the, the null hypothesis is actually set on um, on the population mean okay so and I talked about some procedures used in the, during hypothesis testing all right so the first one is to set up two contradictory hypotheses all right so the null hypothesis the population mean here is actually 275 so we are saying the population mean equals to 275 all right now then um then there's a question i need to ask is this a one tail or a two tail test okay from the problem we can see if um we are trying to test that um the the, the, the study hour is actually greater than 275 or is actually less than 275 no there's nothing like that so we are, we are just trying to see if it is 275 or it is not 275 so that is the two tail test we are trying to test for difference all right so i need the um not equals to sign okay all right so we have two seven five all right so this is a two tier test okay this is a two tier test and this is a one sample test because we are giving just one sample mean we are giving just um one um, population standard deviation all right then we only have one sample size which is 30 all right so the next thing we need to collect sample data so the sample mean the population mean mean is uh, 275 all right then the population standard deviation from the question is the, they said the standard deviation is 55 hours all right so this is 55 then the alpha is um, 0.05 percent Okay, so we are using zero five percent because this is um so one so um when we deal about when we deal with um, management uh, or social science or in economics, most times we use five percent. But when it comes to health, we use one percent because there must be minimum uh, error to be committed when it, when you deal with uh, people or patients or when you talk about drugs efficacy, you have to commit. The lowest um, minimum error all right 
okay so the sample mean which is x bar and the question is 286 can you see they said the average hours of um, the average hours 30 students use in studying at the college is 286 okay so this is 286 then the sample size which is 30 just 30 students all right okay so we need to determine the correct distribution is it t test or z test we know the population standard deviation is none which is 55 hours so that is um, z i'm using a z distribution all right okay now this is the formula for the z distribution we have z equals to x bar sample mean minus population mean divided by um, the sigma which is population standard deviation divided by square root of n all right then we said it is actually a two tail test so this is z alpha divided by two so when it is a two tail test you divide your level of significance alpha by two but if it is not a two tail test a one tail test then you are going to leave it as z alpha all right so what do we do next we need to analyze our data so let me go over um, to Excel and use Excel to perform the calculations. All right. So n is um n. We have sample mean. All right. We have population mean. Population mean. Okay. Then we have um the population. Um, we have the population standard deviation okay good so this is so these are the uh, statistic and the parameters that we need all right so the sample size is 30 okay So this, the sample mean from the question is um, okay two eight six two eight six population mean is two seven five then the population standard deviation is fifty five all right so we are going to use the formula we have z all right so this is equals to so we open a bracket. We have uh, the sample mean, which is this, minus the population mean, okay, close bracket, divided by open bracket, so the population standard deviation, divided by square root of uh, SQ, okay, the square root of 30, then we'll close the bracket. right okay so to to uh, so let me put this in the two test markers so this is 1.1 um, 1 .1. all right so this is 1.10 into this map is okay so our z um, calculated value is 1.10 Okay, so to get um, the Z tabulated value, we are going to look at this on the um, on the table, on the normal um, normal distribution table. Okay, remember that in the first video I talked about this. I also said this is also what we call the critical region. All right, it's it's actually part of what will help us make a decision. Okay, so. You divide um, the alpha by by two, so you have um, 0 0.025. Then you subtract from one. So you subtract this from one. You say one minus 0. Point. Okay. You just subtract from one before we look at um, the value on the z table. One minus. 0.025 so that gives us um, 0 0.975 all right
okay so we are looking at this value on um, the normal distribution table so let's look at um, the normal okay okay very good so we are going to look at from um, the random numbers here we're going to look at that number that is actually closer or that is 0 0.9 um, 0 0.975 okay so this is 0 0.973 okay so very good so this is 0 0.975002 can you see so we are going to look to the left this is 1.9 all right then we are going to look to the top so 1.9 plus plus 0 0.006 so, so this is 1.9 plus 0 0.06. So that gives us um, 1.96. All right. Okay. So the critical region is um, 1.96, or you can say the Z um, tabulated value is 1.96. All right. So to make it, so the decision is. Um, reject just like the first um, example we reject the null hypothesis hypothesis if the z um, calculated is greater than uh, the z tabulated okay otherwise accept it All right, so let's make our conclusion. Okay, so to conclude now, so we said since um, since um, okay, so our z calculated is one point one zero since one, since z cal, which is one point one zero. All right is less than the, the z tab which is 1.96 okay we accept we cannot reject because the z calculated value is actually less than the z um, tabulated value so we accept the null all right we accept the null hypothesis and conclude that and conclude that based on the sample data based on the sample data okay so we are going to look at the problem again based on the same sample data we can see that um, the mean study hours of, um, of the entire college population is 275 all right so let me just copy this out okay good So based on the sample data, um, we can conclude that based on the sample data, comma, all right, the mean hours used to study by the entire college population is two seven five hours. All right, okay. So don't forget that um, this analysis is actually based on sample, and um, it is not one hundred percent accurate. All right, let me repeat myself. This analysis is not 100% accurate because you're judging the entire population based on sample and statistics is also not 100% accurate. And statistics, they actually get you closer to precision and they help you make um, better decisions. So thank you very much. So in the next video, try and expect something on uh, two sample tests. I'm going to be showing a video and um, doing a video on two sample tests whereby you have um, 
this, this, you also have this z um, distribution and t distribution and um, we're going to be looking at um, very um, various examples too and so thank you very much thanks for taking time to watch my video and make sure you subscribe to this channel thank you stay blessed